This is reposted. Today we're joined by Tim Thompson. He's the founder and chief revolution thinker at RevThink. They help entrepreneurs thrive in business, life, and career. Thanks for joining us today, Tim. Yeah, good to see you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Um, So today we're looking at an idea from Mandy Hale. She's a best-selling author, and she says, there is nothing more beautiful than someone who goes out of their way to make life beautiful for others. I picked this quote today, Tim, because I think you did that for me, and I'm curious what this means to you. Oh, you're very sweet. Um, Yeah, I like this quote from Andy. You know, it reminds me a lot of um, some of those universal truth things that we understand, something like like the golden rule, you know, Mm -hmm. do unto others. Um, There's some reality that no matter what we do in life, we're going to come across others. I like to think of life as a journey, right, and a path. And uh, no matter what happens, you're going to come to intersections with other people. Um, so I tell people, you should always obey the signs that you see at the intersection. Um, yeah. But when there are no signs, like be bold and give the other person the right away. Um, and I like this. So the, I, this idea, Mandy has the same principles. This, this idea of like making life beautiful actually comes at the action of making other people's life beautiful. You can't necessarily make it for yourself. Um, and so that thoughtfulness about other people, it's incredible. Good job, Mandy. You know, I really like Mandy Hale because she's both wild and holy. She's both Southern and sassy. And I've read The Single Woman like 10 times. So I've, I really connect with Mandy in a whole lot of ways. You know, Tim, uh, I've been doing this interview thing for a little bit. And I feel like I've come up with this formula of what people do. And then I came to you and I'm like, I cannot put Tim in a box used to be a pastor, you used to be in Hollywood, now you're writing brands. And then I, so I was like, what the heck does Tim do? Would you, I mean, I heard a phrase in one of your podcasts, you guys move intellectual furniture around. (laughs) Is that what you guys do? I love it. Well, you actually, someone said to me once, they go, well, leave it to Tim. He's like rearranging my intellectual furniture. (laughs) Um, Yeah, you're totally right. Well, you know, so yeah, I, I started in Hollywood. Uh, uh, my first job was actually on the Oscars, the Emmys, these big shows uh, early on. Um, and then I got pretty lucky. I ended up working for this design company and we happened to have done the opening credits for the movie seven. And that kind of propelled a lot of us into this design production animation and um, like big, uh, big stadium thinking space. Um, so I did that for many, many years and just about we'll call it like burnout, you know, like there's just something when you're doing a hundred hour weeks at the peak and you're sitting in the room with the A-list directors making the opening credits to their films, you really can only do that for so much. And then that life reset made me reset lives. And I started realizing bigger, more important things than just like achievement, you know, this like, I don't know, career achievement. Um, so it's really been that pursuit for the last 20 years that has inspired me to start Rev Think kind of get involved in people's lives, rearrange intellectual furniture, that kind of stuff. It's, uh, um, and it's the inspiration. So when I met Andrew talking about even filmmaking, you know, Andrew can tell you, like, I, like we re- reverse engineered the idea of what it takes to make content so that you can actually think of it in positive and productive business principles than just like make something good, hope somebody chooses you someday. I got a bunch of this Ikea crappy furniture. I think I need you to move to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you mentioned the reverse engineering. I think that's something that's really interesting that you find, you identify what's not existing and create to that versus saying, hey, I have an idea and then go the path everyone else is going. I think you guys really take a different look and, and really help people move forward. Yeah, like I think life is really mean to us. Like the people have set up rules and, they, <laughs> um, and they're unfair. So the reverse engineering to me, uh, reminds me of like when I was a kid, fifth grade, um, a substitute teacher gave us some mazes, you know, those mazes where you draw a pencil line. She was just occupying our time, whatever. <laughs> and um, I got mine done real quick. I went to the front. I said, I'm finished. What else should I do? And she go, she asked me, how did you do it so fast? I'm like, well, it's simple. I started at the finish. And I found my way to the start. And then she said, you cheated. You can't do that. And I thought, wait, how's that cheating? Like I found the path just because I, like, why not change the rules? Like, who says that's cheating? And I feel like life, I've done that over and over in life. And many of us kind of think of it as like getting away with something or doing something wrong. 
But in reality, like if you always know where you're going to end up, then the beginning's much easier to understand. Um, and that's like, if you're going to be successful achieving something, then know what you're trying to achieve before you get started. And I, I just like that idea too, that I didn't put you in a box and I don't think anybody can. <laughs> and going back to this quote about um, adding beauty to life is removing the boxes for people and saying like, it can be what you want it to be. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that she chose the word beautiful? And, uh, and I think it could be seen as just like fluffy. Like she's that, you know, she's that sassy Southern girl writing Christian books and putting beautiful out there because it's a sa like it's just fluffy girly thing thing. But beauty actually is something you perceive. And uh, what's amazing about beauty is you can't consume beauty, can you? Like you can, you can eat a good meal, but when something's beautiful, you actually just have to passively absorb it and bring it in. So now imagine making life beautiful for something else, like for someone else. You actually have to give people the eyes to see it in order for them to see it's beautiful. Um, so I love that idea of like, oh, it's my responsibility to open up other people's eyes, other people's minds, see things as beautiful. Um, that's that's a that's a great calling. Yeah, and I think also focusing on the beauty and seeing it through other people, I've found that things where I put my head down and just work and come out with an end product is less rewarding than lifting someone else up or bringing someone else on board. And I, that's, to me, what you guys do day in and day out is like, hey, come along with us. Here's some interesting ideas you haven't thought of. And it's a different way to think about it. And I really like that. Yeah. The, I'm on a little bit of a kick nowadays because um, I've come to talk, talk to people about that the, there's a difference between agreeing and understanding each other, right? So I can understand you. I don't have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a difference between understanding somebody and knowing somebody. Um, and I think that often knowledge is something that when we are, we're on the knowledge side, we try to prove ourselves. I want to show you what I know. And we, we spend our time peacocking and putting ourselves out there and proving ourselves to others. Understanding somebody is, again, slowing down, being passive and taking the time to learn, hear what they're about, coming alongside them, opening up their mind to things. So I think we have a responsibility now, especially now there's so much craziness in the world to start understanding one another. If you, if you don't agree with them, that's fine, but you also have to, you have to push your knowledge on them to understand them. It's really just listening, caring for, and caring about them first. Um, so these are like the idea of reversing your agenda instead of what you're going to do and, and calculating success on what you've accomplished more of like calculating success on whose heart you're touched, how their life has grown, how they're thriving in life, wh what they can see in life. That's a way better scorecard to keep for yourself. Yeah. And I'm sure at some particular point, a company hires you guys at RevThink to come in and help them with their story. And they're like really right ba brained type people. How do you like, what's one tip for someone who doesn't sort of, that lacks that sort of creative out of the box thinking that you give them to be like, hey, here's an idea to help you unlock your story in a new direction. Uh, very good question. Like I find that one of the things that holds most people back is imagination. Um, so a lot of people feel like they want to achieve something, but they haven't imagined what it's like to be in that position. So like the idea of the maze, they don't know what the finish line feels like, and then they can't get to the beginning. Um, find a mentor, read a good book, uh, take a great vacation, fall in love with somebody. Those are places where our heart comes out and we understand who we are more. And then when you find that, listen to that voice inside and write that sucker down because that's what you should be doing. And then you should just make life plans to make that possible. Um, those are where I feel that like people, you know, take the moment and they slow down and they achieve the things they wanted to achieve. I love that. Everything you just said to me was like the beauty in life. So that was perfectly tied this all together. Tim Thompson, thank you again so much for joining us. Guys, go to RevThink.com. You can find them on Instagram at Rev.Think. I'm Andrew Keller for Larry Roberts and Tim Thompson saying thanks for stopping by.